director and india i'm vijaya and with me is barrister solicitor and canadian attorney gagan jyot mundra hi gagan hi vijaya thank you for having us super having you on and giving us the canadian immigration perspective so gagan uh, you know another uh, question from a listener and they ask that they are an international student joining college in canada this fall so what are the changes in the study permit program that they should be aware of that's a fantastic question and uh, i get so many inquiries on it and especially because there's so much in- misinformation around as well mm-hmm. and to begin yes canada has been working closely for on the international study program for students and there are huge changes that we had not seen in past so many years so starting january we saw a number of changes and that's going to impact students who are already there in Canada as well as students who are looking to extend their study permit so mm-hmm. even if you were holding a study permit and you want to extend it the new laws will be applicable on you as well uh-huh. uh, one of the most important requirements now is that provincial attestation letters are required from the province you wish to study so if you are looking to study in ontario or in alberta or any of those provinces you must have these letters from them so this is for the province to issue and not for the institution so there is a difference and that's what the students should be aware of where to reach and the right authority for it Uh-huh. Another one is proof of acceptance from the DLI. DLI are the designated learning institutions. So only from these institutions that uh, the students can apply and get their international study permit uh, applied for. If these um, institutions are, for example, private institutions, then they will not be eligible for study permit at all. So wow. you have to be very careful. Get onto their website, and uh, IRCC has made changes to the study permit forms as well, uh, where they are now looking to provide this kind of information. So be very careful. Don't go. Uh, don't be at the end of the game where you are applied. You have uh, obtained your admission, but guess what? They are not DLIs. So mm-hmm. be careful on that. Yeah. Earlier also uh, there's a minimum $10,000 that were required to be put into a GIC account which was uh, for the government to ensure that you have enough money in your uh, uh, enough funds to support yourself during your academic year. Now from 10,000 that has increased 20,000. and if you have a family member so there's an additional 5000 or 7000 for each family member so make sure you have uh, enough financial uh, funds in addition to your academic fees etc mhm okay we also see that starting uh, this is the most important one which uh, everybody has been talking about of the number of hours these students can work earlier they could work uh, full time there was no cap but uh, starting uh, i think it was on april 30th that the minister said that no it's going to be only limited to 20 hours and uh, this fall it will be up to 24 hours that students can work off campus uh-huh okay. another important and this is one of the most important uh, again that uh, we talk a, a lot about with international students coming from india especially now the spouses cannot have an open work permit uh these spouses uh, the international students who only have uh, who are only pursuing masters degree or higher will be eligible for uh, open work permit for their spouses so for the undergrad program where the majority of students are coming and pursuing their their studies yeah. um they will not be eligible for open work permit So a lot of these nuances and post graduation work permit we are waiting for more changes to come in and to be announced in days uh, by probably by September we should have uh, more clarity from the government on that aspect also. Mm-hmm. So we'll continue to keep our listeners uh, uh updated yes, on this. Yes please do. And mm-hmm. uh, we'll uh, definitely we are also waiting for the government on more clarification as they make these announcements. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that and of course like we see it's not just the student but it's also the the spouses that are impacted by this. So Absolutely. you got to keep an eye out for that and you're doing that for us. So thank you Gagan. And that's Gagan Jyot Mundra of the NPZ Law Group helping you with the A to Z of US and Canadian immigration, green cards, marriage cases, H1B visas and more. Find them at visaserve.com or call them at 201-670-000